Trondheim, Norway, the most northerly destination in the UEFA Champions League, and home to one of the competition's success stories, Rosenborg. The qualifying victory over Inter Bratislava of Slovakia produced a record seventh consecutive appearance in the UEFA Champions League, and this is a team who've proved time and again they can cut it with the big boys. Who could ever forget that 2-0 victory over the mighty Real Madrid in 1997? Madrid's only defeat in the competition they went on to win. Or the season before when they beat AC Milan 2-1 at the San Siro. This is a club with a wealth of European experience. If you want to discover the secret of Rosenborg's success, you have to get to know the people of this picturesque city of Trondheim. Community spirit is the driving force here. The ball club is the heart of Rosenburg, as coach Nils Anna Egan explains. We're part of the town of Trondheim and the land of Norway. So we must have an open relationship and surroundings here. We need the support of everyone. Therefore, they need to feel welcomed at our clubhouse. For the players, it's a vital contribution to their development. The secret behind Rosenborg's success is that we are very ordinary. And that is very important because Rosenborg is a small club. And this is our way to make everything work. For Nils Anna Egan, it's important that the club is involved in community projects. Mot is an organisation that works with young people across Norway. Club captain Eric Hofton's just one player more than happy to donate his time. <laughs> In many ways, football players are children's role models. By working in an organization like this, you'll get noticed. And I believe the young will listen to what we have to say. And for us, it's important to be a part of something positive. If it'll have an impact on society, I think that's very good. For Rosenborg, success comes at a price. As a result of good performances in the UEFA Champions League, key players like John Carew and Jan Derek Sorensen have moved on to bigger clubs. But as one player goes, another comes in. And Rosenberg are on target for their 10th consecutive domestic title. Egan has his own unique formula for grooming young talent. We think that to develop a football player, we must develop their whole personality. And either they have a small job to do that, or they do it through study. And that improves their football. Goalkeeper Arne Arison is one player who's benefiting from the club's policy to mix football and studies. For Arne, a typical day involves two training sessions, followed by a home study class. The Icelandic internationals reading law, Icelandic law that is, and is in his fifth year, hoping to complete his degree just before Christmas. When we caught up with Arne, we asked him if his education was something that was encouraged by the coach. There's no doubt about that. He is very eager that we should have something to do besides football. I also believe it is important that people have other things to do, at least if they have the time. Two careers? So how difficult is it for Arnie to juggle the rigours of professional football with his student life? It has gone mostly well but it is hard sometimes when a match collides with exams. So then I must choose the football. There have been a few problems with that. Frode Jonsson's found it more difficult to incorporate his training as a policeman since his $1.6 million summer move from Norwegian club Odd Grenland. It's not possible to combine these two at the same time, but the day I'm finished with football, it'll be nice to have the opportunity to become a policeman again. One of my years at school, I worked on the force and liked it very much. Yeah, I'd very much like to work as a policeman again. 
The UEFA Champions League has been some form of compensation for the striker brought in to replace John Carew. That's why I joined Rosenborg, to get that chance. It's great fun when it gets dark here in Trondheim and the floodlights are on and there are 22,000 in the stadium, then it's fun to play football. I'm very pleased to have the opportunity to play for Rosenborg. But this season's UEFA Champions League hasn't begun in a blaze of glory. After match day one was postponed, match day two ended in a 2-1 defeat at home to Porto. Brazilians Pena and Deco found the net for the Portuguese side. While the only consolation for Nils Arne Egan and his Rosenborg team came via a Sigurd Rosfeld injury time strike. We didn't play a good game against Porto. Porto played well. They're building a good team. The Latin teams are very powerful. Match day three brought Juventus to the Lerkendal. The two previous meetings here had ended one all, but this time Juve threatened to run riot. Juventus finally broke the deadlock in the 85th minute through Del Piero. But celebrations were short-lived. Bent Scamelsrud would equalise from the spot in the final minute. When they play the reverse fixture, Rosenberg will have to go one better. It should be different because we need to win. We were a bit lucky at home, but if we play better in the return leg and play a better game down there, then we should get something from it. So we'll see. Before they travel to Italy, Rosenberg play their rescheduled match day one fixture at Celtic. Drumming up motivation for that game is assistant coach Ola Bayrisa. Like many of the players here, Ola too has a favourite pastime away from the football scene, music. It's a sort of hobby and it's about using your creative side and doing what you enjoy. Do something else in your life besides football. Don't just think about football, but think about other things. The former Rosenberg goalkeeper used to be a drummer in a punk band when he was younger. He's even written a song called Lerkendal after the club's stadium. Although Ola now prefers to play guitar, we managed to get him back on the drums. So while Ola beats the skins, let's introduce the other guys. On guitar, Torstein Flackner, who wrote this track aptly named the Champions League. On bass, Sola Jonsson, who's no stranger to fame, the Rosenborg fanatics normally found behind the drums for Trondheim band the Dum Dum Boys. And also on guitar, writer and producer, Ulf Risnes. We decided to ask the experts what they thought of Ola's drumming skills. He's very good, a little rusty maybe, won't practice and he'll be fine. Considering he hasn't played drums for a long time, he's very good. It took him five minutes and he was grooving. As a trainer and keeper, he gets full marks from me. It's Celtic up next for Ola and the Rosenborg boys. Will there be a standing ovation for them in Glasgow? We have to expect pressure. And if we don't manage to tackle that, we have a problem. But I hope and I believe that we will gain points. And I think that a draw is a good bet. Thank you. <laughs>